Hello, welcome to Strong Flow Vinyasa. And today we're gonna do a practice that gets into the first chakra. So the first chakra is that base chakra, uh, Muladhara. And um, the color of that is red. So we're gonna be doing a lot of grounding practices. We're really gonna get into the feet. We're gonna hold some of those um, postures a little bit longer today as well. So um, maybe, you know, five to eight breaths. Um, in there, depending on how fast you breathe. And that's about anywhere between 20 to 40-ish seconds, okay? And um, props, you might want one. Um, I've got one on each side um, in case I need it when we switch sides. Um, but if you know you're going to need one for triangle or just, you know, not coming all the way to the floor, um, you can always bring them in. And we will use a strap at the end as well, right before Shvatna. So coming to a nice tall seat, whatever that looks like for you, ears, shoulders, and hips are in alignment. And we're going to zip up that front body. Good. I'm just going to take my palms down here, inviting that grounding energy into the practice. I'm just going to breathe here. I'm trying to expand the rib cage as I breathe. While you're here, is there anywhere that you could soften just a little bit more? Okay. Really focus on expanding that rib cage if you can when you're in your breathing practices. That allows um, more movement in the thoracic spine and less compensation in the low back. Good. Now, if you would like to bring the Ujjayi Pranayama in, that back of the throat constriction breath, um, you can. So for those of you that need a review, if you're doing it on the inhale, it's good. you're going to make an A8 sound, and the air is going to kind of come in um, through the back of the throat, so something like this. Good. If you're doing it on the exhale, you're going to make an HA ha sound. On the exhale, forcing that air up and out the nose like this. And then full ujjayi is both the inhale and the exhale like that. I can't talk and do ujjayi at the same time, so I'm just going to do a couple rounds. But please feel free to incorporate that into your practice. So from here. Good. Once you're ready, big inhale and reach, touching palms together, exhale, bringing hands into heart center. So I gave you the theme, um, first chakra today. Um, so that's going to be grounding, security, community, being rooted. Um, so we'll kind of give you some affirmations around that today. You can also just focus on the color red. That's the color of the first chakra. And once you have that set, we'll inhale and reach, turning palms away, through collar, from crown to tail. Good. Now from here, we're going to come to all fours. Good. And then from the all fours, we're actually going to make our way um, up to standing. So I'm going to do it through a downward facing dog. So I'm going to tuck the toes. I'm going to shift back. I'm pressing in and forward into my mat, rooting through knuckles, a pinky corner and thumb as I lift my knees and lift my hips. And this being maybe your first down dog of the day, maybe you want to go ahead and walk the dog a little bit here, just getting a little bit of a strut. Shoulders are away from the ears. Ears are by the biceps. Elbows are turning more towards the ceiling. Good. And then from here, when you're ready, looking forward, bending the knees. Walking or stepping the feet forward beneath the hands, bending those knees, pressing into the floor, and coming up. Good. So while we're standing here, we're going to do the rest of our little warm up here, a little prep. The feet are going to be about hip width apart, so hips, knees, and toes are going to track. Take a big inhale and reach. I'm going to take my hands together here, kind of like in a temple mudra position. I'm going to reach. My shoulders are grounded, though, and I'm going to tick tock. Now, as I go side to side, 
I'm trying to keep my hips grounded so I'm not swaying. I'm using that control in the thoracic spine going side to side. Yeah. And my belly button is in and my knees are a little soft. Good. And then from here, when you're ready, let's just take that all the way over to the left. Watch that front shoulder if it's coming forward. Could you open that back up? Reach that arm a little bit longer. You'll get a deeper connection down the side. Breathe and expand. And then we'll come up. We'll go right into the other side. Breathing. Expanding that rib cage. And then coming back, big inhale, exhale. Let's just bend the knees as we come down. Press through the legs and the feet as you come up. So you're making the legs take the load here with a nice long back. When the legs don't take the load, your back ends up taking the load and then your back doesn't like it. So use your legs, build your strength. And then one more time, coming all the way up. Good, from here, I'm gonna let my arms come to the side and I'm just gonna go to rotation. Now, again, I'm doing a little bit more advanced rotation for most people, I'm keeping my hips forward, but you can always move the hips with you if that's what you need, but I like to keep it in the torso. Good. And then from here, good. We'll come to a standing cat cow. So again, feet, um, knees, hips are hip width apart. I'm gonna sit back into a chair. I'm gonna let my hands be right here on the thigh. Good, here's my neutral spine, my flat back. Good, I'm gonna round the spine, tucking the tail. There's your cat, that, your cat pose. And then inhale, on cow. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Coming back to that long back, pressing through the legs, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Pardon me for a moment while I take a sip of my tea here. All right, so from here, from the top of our mat, let's continue our warm up. Feet can be hip width apart. Um, and if you've got a back issue, I'm gonna recommend that you sat um, if you're, Okay, back there, you can step the legs and the feet together. Otherwise, big inhale and we'll reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Coming to the block, bending the knees as needed. So, hands on the floor, block. Coming to the chins or thighs. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root through the feet. Engage the legs, coming all the way up. Bending those legs as needed. And coming up. Always a flat back when we rise. Inhale and we'll lift. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step back into the plank. Good. Knees can be lifted or grounded. Find a little bit more length in the torso here. Yes, it makes it harder, but it makes it a better plank. More effective plank. Knees can lower at any time. From here, I am going to lower my knees, untucking the toes. Elbows come forward. Shoulders stay away from the ears as elbows bend straight back, raising my body as I come down. Good. Hands under the shoulders, rolling shoulders back. Zipping up front body. Inhale. Find a baby cobra. Find one along the spectrum or a high cobra. And exhale, taking that back down. Good. From here, you choose how you need to get back to your down dog. So if you're more experienced, you can tuck the toes, put up in a plank, sit back down dog, or you can move through a tabletop position. Good. Take a moment in your down dog, find your breath, find intention. And from down dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, roll bow. Inhale, root engage and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Good. We'll go through this next um, three a little bit quicker. You choose to take or skip the flow. Take any modifications as needed. Inhale and we'll reach. Exhale and we'll fold. 
Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little back. Inhale, step or hop back to plank. You too. Take or skip a flow. From downward facing dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root engage and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Two, inhale and we lift. Exhale, little hold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, step or hop back to plank. You two, take or skip a flow. I'm going to skip this one. From down dog, when you're ready, inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage the glute, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, little lift. Exhale, little fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale. Inhale, little bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip a flow. From down dog when you're ready. Inhale, look forward, bend the knee. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage the glutes. Rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last one. Inhale and lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, step or hop back to plank. You too. Take or skip a flow. And take a good breath here. Find that ujjayi. Even if your heels are not grounded here, you can still root in. So press evenly into big toe and pinky toe mount. Press in and forward into your hands. From here, left leg's going to lift three points, bending that knee, opening up to the left. Strong, even upper body so that left shoulder is down. Gaze this to that right foot. You can hang out here. You can open and close. You can circle. Find what your body needs right now. And then once you're ready, we'll bring that left foot back down. Good. Even everything up. Right leg lifts three points. Bending that knee. Opening up to the right. Strong, even upper body. Right shoulder is away from the ear. Gazes to that left foot. Again, you can find the movements if you need them. And they might be different on this side than the other side. And then once you're ready, that foot's going to come down. Good. From down dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale and lift. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root engage and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Finding your breath, your mountain, and your all right, so from here, we're going to take a um, little slow down and open up into Prasarita. Good. So the first affirmation I will give you here is I am where I am supposed to be. I am where I am supposed to be. And from here, big inhale and reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow from here. I'm going to, in order to face you, I'm going to take my right foot back. Now, it might be a different foot for you, but I'm going to take that back and walk that around. Okay. Now, I'm in a wide-legged table, wide leg forward fold here. So, you want your big toes to be in alignment with each other. Hips, knees, and toes are tracking forward. And the short edges of my mat are parallel to the edges of my feet. And I'm engaging the edges of my feet so I'm not collapsing in here. So I really want to press onto that outer edge. Now, while I'm in this nice wide-legged table, lengthen the torso here. So if you're not sure, see if you can take the chest a little bit more forward like you were going into a cow position. Good. From here, I'm going to take my right 
hand under the face. You can also have that hand on a block if you need to be up a little bit higher. Shifting the hips to the left, pressing through, opening up. So get into the feet and breathe. We'll press out of that shoulder if you're hanging in it. And taking that down, hips come back even to the floor. Good. Now your left hand is going to come under the face to the floor to a block. Shifting the hips to the right, press through, open up, and breathe. Belly button stays in. I am exactly where I am supposed to be. I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. And when you're ready, we'll take that down. Hips are gonna come back even to the floor. Put a little bend in the knees, hands to the thigh, and we'll come back up. Okay, so I'm gonna start going to my right side first because I always tend to start at the left even though I'm right-handed. So I'll start the right side today. So I'm going to turn the right foot towards the right. So hip, knee, and toe are going to follow that rotation. And then my back foot, hips, knees, and toes are going to turn inward 45-ish degrees. Kind of think about that back toe kind of trying to come up towards the front corner of your mat. Now the setup for warrior two, you will bend that front knee. It'll be over or behind the ankle. We don't want to be too far forward. So over or behind it, good. That front hip's gonna come back, back hip's gonna come forward. Now I'm gonna leave the hips where they are and I'm gonna open the chest to the side and reach. So warrior two is a twist, not often thought of one, but it is because you've got rotation in the spine. Good, front knee tracks towards your pinky toe. So again, don't forget the edges of your feet. Breathing. Now this is a pretty basic yoga pose in most classes. But the longer you're here, the harder it becomes. So notice what comes up for you here. Coming back to the color red. We're thinking about that root chakra. It's the base of the spine. Relax your shoulders here. Get into the big toe, pinky toe mounds and the heels of the feet. Even though you're pressing through the outer edges, you're still in all four corners of the feet. We're just not collapsing into the inner arches. With a bent front knee or a lengthened front leg, good. We're gonna take that back into Exalted Warrior. It's a balance challenge. If you look up at your hand, if you need to take that out, look straight ahead. Front leg can lengthen at any time if you need it. They're really rude in those feet. How could you be a little bit more at ease in your toes? And then from here, coming back to warrior two. Notice how I did not shift my hips during that sequence. I'm going to lengthen that front leg. We're going to come into a triangle from here. So my front hip's going to come back. My back hip's going to come forward. I've got same arm as leg coming out. Good. And I'm going to root my feet in like I'm trying to rip my bat apart. I'm lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. When I can come no more, you can come to a thigh, a shin. It's um, easier, especially if you're newer or don't have a lot of rotation in the spine, to take your hand to a block at any height you need on the outside of the foot. It's harder if you're on the inside of the foot, inside of the foot, facilitate a deeper rotation. So find it where you can find it. Good, pressing the floor of the block away from you. Remember, this is not a forward fold. We've got a nice long spine here. How about I am grounded? I am grounded. Breathing, breathing. And 
hand. Looking down at that front foot, putting a bend in that front knee, coming back to your warrior two, lengthening that front leg, hips, knees, and toes are going to turn inward. Okay, so from here, big inhale and reach. Exhale, we're going to come back forward again, bringing in a block if you need it. Find your nice wide-legged table. Good. We're going to take that twist sequence again. This time, I'm going to take the uh, left hand under the face to the floor to a block, shifting the hips to the right, pressing through an opening. I'm still pressing through the outer edges of the feet. Breathe. And once you're ready, we'll take that down. Hips come back even to the floor. Good. Right hand's going to come under the face to the blocker to the floor. Shift the hips to the left. Press away. Open up to the left. Breathe. Once we're ready, we'll take that back down, hips back even to the floor, putting a bend in the knee, taking feet, or not the feet, but taking yourself back up. And we're gonna do that same sequence on the left side. So now my left hip, knee toes, are all gonna turn out towards the left. Good. My back leg, everything's gonna turn in 45-ish degrees. So think about that back big toe towards the front corner of your mat. Good. And then from here, you know, your front knee can bend over or behind the ankle. Front hip's gonna come back, back hip's gonna come forward. Hips will stay where they are. Open the chest to the side and reach and breathe. So we zip up that front body too. Front knee tracks towards pinky toe as well. And again, how could you be a little bit more at ease in the toes? And so I am where I'm meant to be. I am grounded. What about I am safe? I am safe. And with a bent knee or a long leg, good. We'll take that back exalted. You can look up if you want the balance challenge or look straight ahead if you need to take a little bit of that challenge away. How could you be a little bit more at ease here? When you're ready, good. Finding that warrior two one more time. And we'll lengthen that front leg. So we'll take triangle on this side. Good, so front hip's gonna come back. Back hip's gonna come forward. Same arm as leg. Good, it's a hinge from the hip, but root into those feet and legs. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. When you can come no more, you can come to a thigh, a shin. Outside if you need it to be easier, inside if you need it to be harder, which I can do with a little bit more ease on the side today. So that's where I'm going to take it. So find your Uh, breathing, and once you're ready, good. we'll look down at that front foot. We'll put a bend in that front knee, coming back to warrior two, and we'll come back up. Toes, knees, and hips are going to turn back forward just for a moment. And then from here, turn hips, knees, and toes out. Let's get a nice sunrise flow in here, um, one of my favorite little uh, movements. So from here, I'm pressing in the feet. I've got the outer edge of the foot engaged as well. 
I can still lift my toes. And from here, big inhale, exhale, take that down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, pause. Good. So the knees tracking still towards the pinky toe. Try not to let them fall inward if they're falling inward. Again, engage that outer edge of the foot. That really helps. Belly button is in. And then we'll come back up. Good. Hands to heart center. You can heel toe, heel toe everything in or hop it back together. And we'll come to the top of our mat. Okay. From the top of the mat. Big inhale and we'll reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale. A little bow. Now from this bow, we're going to step the right foot back again. And this time you're going to choose a low lunge with the knee grounded or a high lunge, which is the one I'm going to demo. So if you're in the high lunge, you're in parallel railroad track feet. So that back heel is not going to be grounded. So when you're ready, pressing into both feet, find your root, find your high lunge. So the left hip's going to come back, right hip's going to come forward. I'm strong through that back leg. Belly button is in. Breathing. I am safe. I am grounded. I am exactly where I'm meant to be. I am exactly where I'm meant to be. From here, when you're ready, we're going to take this into a twist. So from here, I'm just going to lean forward. Good. Right hand can come down to the floor or to a block. And then I'm going to rotate towards the left. I'm still strong through that back edge or the foot. Not the back edge, but I don't want to be droopy if you're lifted. You really press. Find your strength. Everyone's a little bit stronger than you think. And then from here, I'm going to come out, plant the hands, front foot steps back. You choose, take or skip a flow. Good. Coming back to the downward facing dog. From down dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step or hop your feet forward to meet your hand. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, one will bow. From here, we're gonna step the left foot back this time. The left foot comes back. So again, you can choose to be grounded, lowering that back knee or lifted, pressing back. Hold on a minute, that walk's getting in the way. Okay, so parallel, railroad tracks, find your length, find your legs and your feet. Find your lift, front hip comes back. So strong through the back leg, strong in the front, strong in the core, strong in the breath. I am in the present. I am in the present. It's really hard to ground if you keep thinking about the past or what you're going to do next in the future or far out in the future. Be in the present. When you're ready, good. We'll take that forward. Good. Left hand's going to come to the block or to the floor. Find your length, opening up and reaching. Once you're ready, hand can come down. Planting the hands, front foot steps back. You choose, take or skip a flow. From down dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. 
Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage the glutes, raise all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Finding breath, mountain, intention. Okay, so from here, we're going to take this into a pre-pose. Um, for those of you uh, that are really tight in your hips right now and maybe going out to the side, doesn't feel good to you, um, you're just going to come onto a one-leg standing balance. Okay, just the basic standing balance. So from here, remember, you can always come to a wall um, or hold on to the back of a piece of furniture if you need that. But from here, I'm going to start with my left leg first. So notice how my hip, knee, and toe are tracking forward. I don't want to do a balance challenge turning inward. If you do that, you're going to mess up your knee, your hip, and your low back. And if you've already got those problems, we don't want to make them worse. So hip, knee, and toe track forward of that supporting leg, zipping up. Hands can be here, out here, up here, at prayer. Um, sometimes I like to kind of be right here for whatever reason um, when I first get into it. Um, so just kind of find yours. But option one, good. You can be kickstand. So foot down, hip, knee, and toe are turning out. You can be at the shin. You can be at the thigh. We want to be at the thigh or the shin. We don't want to be on the knee joint. Okay. And I'm going to actually kickstand over here today. And it's also, if you've got slippery pants, the foot might not also stay here. You can also hold it there if you want to. So I'm going to be right here. I'm going to zip up, dead end, find it. So those of you that have opted to stand on one foot, the left leg only, you can take your knee as high as you can tolerate where you're stable. So if you're not stable when your foot is barely off the floor, you will not magically become more stable by taking the leg higher. So be where you are in the moment. Really rooting that leg in. Where I am grounded. It's okay if you fall out. Trees fall over every day. Tree is also harder the longer you're in it. And when you're ready, good. We'll come carefully out of there. Shake out that supported leg. The stronger your hips become, the less of a burn you'll feel down here. That's just the ankle compensating for a lack of strength in the hip. So strengthen those up. Good. And the, this practice is a good one to help you do that. Good. Hip, knee, and toe are going to track forward on the right side. Zipping up. Again, you can be on a single leg balance here. You can kick stand it. You can be at the shin or the calf muscle. You can be at the thigh. Okay. So be where you need to be here. I'm going to be down here on the Shin today, zipping up. Trying to press out of the hip. Sometimes we hang here. Could you press out, growing taller? Could you soften the face? It's getting hard. It's getting hard. But I'm still here. I'm working on that rootedness. I'm shaking. That's okay. And we'll take that out. Shaking out that way. Woo! All right. Let's come to the floor and stay down there. So from the top of your mat. Good. Big inhale and reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip the last flow of this section. And then once you're ready, we're going to drop the knees. And we're going to come to a child's pose. So knees can be together as wide as the mat or somewhere in between. Your arms can be long in front of you, or hands can be back by the ankles. You just kind of choose what you need there. So find your nice child's pose. Breathe and expand. So I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. I am grounded. I am safe. I am in the present.
I have community. I have community. And from here, we will take the hands under the shoulders and we'll come up a little bit. Let's get a nice side bend again. Let's walk the hands over towards the right. As you come over to the right, walk the left fingertip forward, lift the hip, press into the right hand, sink towards the left. Breathe and expand. Woo. Breathe and expand. When you're ready, we'll come back up. Coming back to center, half or full child pose here, just to reset the spine. And then once you're ready, good, we'll come back up. Good. I'm going to walk my hands over to my left. I'm going to walk the right fingertips forward. I'm going to lift the hips, pressing into the left hand, sinking towards the right, breathing and expanding. And then once you're ready, good, we'll lift. We'll come back center. Good. And let yourself have a nice little reset here. Once you're ready, good, we're going to come to a seat. Now, I'm going to bring my blanket back in here for um, this next one. Um, you can also sit up on a block or a pillow. Um, but especially if you're a short person um, with short arms, um, this next one works a little bit better if you're sitting on a blanket. So I'm going to, this is Dandasana, stack pose. So I'm going to take my legs forward here. Legs can be together or a little bit wider apart. And you want your feet to be flat. So your toes are coming towards you. Okay, so we don't want to turn inward. We want them to be nice and flat like the wall in front of you. And then once you're here, take your hands by your hips and press in. So your arms and your spine are going to lengthen just a little bit here when you do that. Good. Feel the core engage a little bit when you do that. Now, knowing that sensation, could you keep that sensation in the midsection of the body as you take your arms out to the side, coming all the way up? And then from the hips with the long back, we're going to come forward. When you can come no more with the long back, lower the arms only. Maybe you touch the toes, maybe you don't, but I've got a nice long back here. Now, if you're kind of rounded a little bit like this and you're trying to find that long back, take your chest more forward, like you're trying to go into a little bit of a cow pose. And then that should help you a little bit here. This is another one that takes a little bit of practice. Now, some of you are going to stay right here. And if you've got osteoporosis or something where forward flexion of the spine um, is not appropriate, I recommend you stay here. Those of you that don't have that problem and forward flexion of the spine is okay, you can fold in. And then once you're ready, good. we'll come up from there. We're going to take this into boat pose now. Boat pose now. And I like this one in a first chakra class because you're still rooting. You're not rooting from the feet, but you're rooting in from the sit bones. And for me, that can be a little bit tricky sometimes because my body wants to veer to the left, which is my strongest side. So I have to really activate my right side in order to stay center. So different things for different people. If you need a grounded boat, or like I say, um, your boat needs to dock, you can take your hands behind you. Good, so now you've got support. Back is still long here. You can bring the feet in. You can be here. You can lift a little bit here or here, okay? 
If you want to do that, but kind of hold on, you can do the same thing. You can be here, 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 or here. You can let go of any of those. That's um, even more challenging. So find your boat, backspace long, Root, try to root evenly into both sits bones here. Belly button is in. Shoulders are relaxed. Face is relaxed and we're breathing. Holding your breath here is a no-no. And once you're ready, we'll take that down. Good. Take the legs out wide. Good. Again, with a long back, just walk that out. Good. So just like before, you have trouble, kind of take that chest forward a little bit. And just go where you can go. Some days, um, not many days, but some days I can get my chest to the floor. Other days, like today, um, that's just not going to happen. So try not to force your body to do something it's not ready for. As we're here, what about I am grounded and whole? I am grounded and whole. And then once you're ready, good. We'll bring that back up. We're going to come onto our backs. Onto our backs. So I'm going to put my blanket out to the side. I'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to have my strap close by because we'll come to that in a moment. And then once you're ready, we're going to come to a basic bridge, a basic bridge. So hip, knees, and toes are going to track here in the same alignment. We don't bridge with the legs out. We don't turn the feet and everything out. So you want to be right here, hips, knees, and toes in alignment. And maybe roll your shoulders back a little bit and a little bit wider in the collar and belly button is it. Now, when you're pressing, coming up into bridge, you want to press into the feet. You also want to press into the arms and the shoulders. If you have a tendency of a shoulder rounding forward, come to robot arms here. That will help you engage it. And today I've actually had that problem. So I'm going to robot my arms here. So whenever you're ready, belly button is in. Inhale, exhale, press into the feet, arms and shoulders and lift. Breathing. Good. If your hips are, have tightened up, could you release them? Notice how that changes how your bridge feels. And if they were relaxed, could you tighten them up and notice how that changes your bridge? One is not necessarily better or worse than the other, just a matter of playing with what feels better for you and your body in the moment. And then we'll take those hips down, bringing the knees into the chest, and we'll rock, rock side to side. Grab your strap. I'm going to start by taking my strap or my left foot rather into my strap, left foot into the strap. Now we've already hit the hamstrings and the inner thighs pretty hard today um, with our poses. So we're going to get the outside of that side, the IT band. So I'm going to lengthen that right leg. I'm going to take both straps into the right hand. My belly button is in. I'm going to arc over first and kind of wiggle around to see where I need to be. And you are certainly welcome to stay here. If you want to go into full twist, take it over, keeping leg in line with the hip, left shoulder grounded, looking to the left. And we'll come back up. We will do a midair switcheroo here. So now your right foot's gonna come into that strap. Your left leg's gonna be long if you can. Both pieces of the strap into the left hand. Arc over 45-ish degrees, wiggle around your fine, your optimal spot. You can choose to stay or taking it over. Okay. Oh, I touched the wall here. Good. Right shoulder's gonna be grounded as you look to the right. Then 
when you're ready. Good. We're going to come back to center. We're going to remove that foot from the strap. Good. So knees can come into the chest. We'll rock, rock side to side. And we're going to come into Shavasana from here. So I'm going to bring my blanket back in here because I love me a good little neck pillow. Good. And if you need to keep knees bent, let them be bent. If you want to flop every or let everything come along and flop open, you can. You can also be on your back or on your side. And then see if you can get yourself to where you can settle in and not fidget. And the last affirmation thought I will give you is the universe will always provide. The universe will always provide. If you prefer to substitute God in place of universe, that's completely fine too, or whatever it is you believe in, they will always provide. I'm taking some deep breaths here. Choose stillness or gently take head and neck from side to side. Choosing stillness or inviting movement of fingers and toes. You can find stillness or maybe taking knees into the chest. Choosing to keep the upper body grounded. Or if you're okay with it and you want it, maybe you lift up into a little bit of a C curve. And then choosing stillness. Removing any props out of the way if you used any during Shavasana time. Taking arms long behind you, legs long in front of you, and reach from the edge of the fingertips to the toes, pointing and flexing through the hands, rolling and ankles and wrists in one direction and then the other. And then from here, once you're ready, bending in both knees, and you choose rolling over to your right or left side, the side that works best for your body in this moment, taking all the time that you need here, and when you're ready, pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat where we started our practice, finding that nice length again in the spine from crown to tail. Ready, big inhale and reach. Touching palms together as you bring those hands back down. Touch those thumbs to the forehead for good and true thought, to the lips for good and kind words, and to the heart for open and loving heart. Knowing no effort on this mat is ever wasted, no gain is ever reversed. May you be safe. May you stay well. May you have a wonderful day, evening, week, month, season ahead. Thank you so much. Namaste.